Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another thrilling installment of the Battle Royale. I am Senshi Denshi, reprising my role as emergency narrator for this edition. This time I'm actually going to try and keep it short so we can get it out in time. Here it is! What's new this issue? A lot. From top to bottom, left to right. Some unpuppeting in Europe as Sparta take lots, Finland Rocklaw, and Sabir Atlas Court and Beaumont into their empires. Sabir also sneak a new city, Lillehammer, in the old Hunic territories. In Africa, the Burrs and Exembans are Congo, but none of the rest of the former Congolese territories, although the population of the area is starting to recover. Asia's pretty quiet in terms of off-screen changes, but Australia found two more cities, Geraldton and Ozanesia, and a mystery city they've exhausted their city list in Japan. Never to be outdone, the Inuit found three more cities in their homelands, all of which are mysteries in terms of names. Seriously, it's getting ridiculous now. That area looks bigger on the map than it is in-game, and it's still the densest area of cities on the whole map. Canada and Exihasapa, north of where Chichen Itza is, and Cincinnati joins Albany in being an unlikely metropolis. I think that's about all of it. We begin today on a humorous note. Yes, despite being dead, the Huns move ever forward into technological advancement. As there's not much else to do in the afterlife. The Timurids look in a decent position around Ghazni, which is a shame because they in Persia have just made peace. Also, note the Tumen, a Lancer replacement which, among other things, is slightly less shitty against cities. England, IRL hub of great music, or at least it used to be, attempts to keep the title in the Royale. It's just a shame the Irish have control over Liverpool, and England has been banished to Spain. That reminded me a lot of English songs, actually. Just a shame they're not in Andalusia. How do you like me now? In all seriousness, the best thing this miniature armada could do is sell exotic goods. Don't try to invade a country with artillery, folks. The Ayubids attempt to recapture Bill Bay. I don't fancy their chances. The terrible Sabir snow cities seem to be in a good position to conquer the terrible Russian snow cities. Why they're bothering is a mystery. The Mughals seem to be doing quite well, despite the fact they're facing down rifles with swords. Must be badass cannons. In all honesty, the Badass Cannon is probably my favourite unique unit in the game. Don't tell T-Pan. The Brazilians are coming. Already they're sweeping down the countryside. Your musketmen can only hold them for so long before your cities fall. Chile is also breaking down your door, but it's not your biggest concern. Because the Brazilians are coming. They're going to break down all your doors. Or almost capture cities and super peas, which seems like something the AI would do. The Maori enter the modern era. What can I say? It's been said a thousand times, I've already narrated it before. If the Maori were somewhere else, they'd be an overwhelming force. Next to Australia, bam. Well, it's really as simple as that. Now, we're cooking with gas. They really should just trade and get out of there. The Irish Isles, or should I say the Icelandic Isles? Limerick falls and Cork is soon to follow. I think London will be the last Irish city to go. It's the southernmost one, not on the coast. Still, it'll fall like all the others, unless Iceland is dumb and sues for peace. I guess you could say an ice age is coming? That's only funny if you're a 70s music nerd like Senshi Denshi. Finland versus Sabir. That's a fight I'd like to see. I also like how Finland pieced out with two nations only to immediately denounce them. Ah, Sweden's old Hakapelita. The unique I'm most tentative to pronounce. Notable in that it cares particularly about great generals, which the one Tipang has graciously highlighted for me is right next to. Berlin is most likely going to stay Swedish, but they'd best get some reinforcements over near Warsaw. A half-dead rifleman isn't the best border patrol. I have a lot of bias toward Vietnam. It was the first Civ I ever made and published all the way back in 2014. Now I have three or four under my belt, as well as all the ones I've updated. I may prefer the boat hooks as a sieve, but I still have the most nostalgia for the watermelon warriors. God, modding seemed so complicated back then. Oh yeah, and they did Broadway. 
I can't think of a good pun, my knowledge of plays is very limited. I tried Saigon with the wind, but that's a movie. But I can imagine the trunks in a cheesy musical. Anyone willing to do fan art for that? No? Moving on. Ireland actually manages to take back Limerick. Yeah, that'll last. The Bucks have finally come to terms with the fact that they can send armies off to battle without boats. Picard should be shaking in his boots. The Brazilians are coming. They approach ever closer. Your men are dead or dying. You don't like your chances. Kharkov is basically dead. It's going to fall. That one rifleman is not going to save it. Indonesia denounces Champa. A war between them would be an interesting naval battle in Southeast Asia. When was the last time that happened? Champa vs Philippines? The Burrs have a clear lead in literacy, followed by other top contenders, and Korea. And the Maori. Why the Maori? We've been over this. No surprises here except for Carthage, who seem to have a lead in take over the Ayubids. I'm sure it'll be fine. Tell the Burrs I said hi. Never mind, Sri Lanka seems to be thinning out the Mughal units. Also note that the infamous Sri Lankan trireme carpet is beating up caravels. Poland steals idea from Rome, which is never a smart plan, sending their last melee units out to sea. To be honest, I don't think Timur is as inviting as Alexios. Limerick and Cork are Icelandic, and they seem to have super sneaky stealth squad attacking Derry from the south. There isn't a music reference here, there might have been one, but the narration for this slide deleted itself. Still, I like bad jokes. There has to be an invisible pun. Yakutia has planes now, in the grand city of Isit, which is a city that is too easy to make puns with. For example, is it a plane? The Blackfoot go after Unk Patina, with two riflemen. Pretty pathetic, to be honest. The Swedes gather around lots, but the Spartans seem to have broken into Warsaw. We may have a very strange scenario in a second. Ah, the Digger. Any Australian knows the Digger's tale, partially because of latent patriotism and partially because the Australian curriculum requires students to learn about Australian history, and the Digger's tale is about half of that. Still, they're cool and they get bonuses on land adjacent to coasts such as, well, most of Oceania, really. Iceland seems to be focusing all of its attention toward the Isles and has practically abandoned its western colonies. Lincoln does not approve of this and denounces Ingolf for Arneson. Can't wait for us at CL to finish Greenland. Then the only Viking name I'll need to worry about is Eric. The Brazilians are still coming, but Chile seems to have backed off. Psych! Chile rushes at Buenos Aires, getting the Argentinian capital down to half health in a single slide. Kharkov has lost about 56% of its population and has become a Siberian enclave. Considering the Russian military presence in the area, that isn't likely to change. Yeah, you know how we psyched you earlier? Well, psych! Argentina is actually holding Brazil off pretty well. For now, at least. Australia may be the swift we most associate with naval dominance, but Korea has the technological lead in that department, boasting submarines and now a large cohort of ironclads. I guess you didn't consider the implications of kettles and fridges, eh, Parksy? Thought your Esky and Billiken would do just fine? Mongolia has numbers, but Yakutia has planes. Something tells me it's a bit difficult to shoot down a triplane with a crossbow. As the ice ships march, well, sail, onwards to Dublin, Ingolfo gets cocky and thinks he's equipped to beat the Trons. I mean, come on, man. Not only do they have a crazy cannon carpet, they're on the other side of the supercontinent. Is this the beginning of the end for Pakal? Probably, yeah. You know, people said the Mayans foretold the apocalypse because they stopped making the calendar or whatever, but maybe they stopped making the calendar 2012 because they got shut by pirates! Now is the winter of our discontent. The Portuguese ships either left or died, but there's more interesting things afoot. Canada is marching on America. A bit late to the party, to be frank. Ten parts ago, they'd be ripe for the picking, but they've grown and matured. They're not veal anymore, they're a fully grown bull. Except they have guns. The Burrs are one of, if not the, scariest sieves in this game. 
They've got a lot of planes. Let's just hope we're not the target. M Marley still exists? So far still exists? Who cares? Look in the top right corner. Shit's about to go down. Australia versus Vietnam. T Pang's Golden Boy versus Senshi's. Nay Rai was not available for comment. The Vietnamese have a better army, but the Wobbegong Armada is not to be trifled with, especially when Nam is rocking galleasses. Come on! Indonesia has better stuff than that. Also note they have ironclads, so what are they going to be doing with that? In a typical display of Australian Eldritch dominance, they beat back a few Vietnamese ironclads with a gang of privateers. There was a Lovecraft story set in Australia, right? Yep, Britain is doomed. Where's your music now? Also, Senshi, I am not singing anything here, okay? You can't- don't even try to make me sing things. You know this text here on the slide? That- that is like in a rhyming fashion? I won't- I won't even read it out of spite. Sabir captures the terrible Russian snow settlements, and the screen lights up with attrition. I don't know what that means. Cannons start bombing Xigasi. Seems to be working relatively well, actually. Good luck getting to Lhasa, though. Igloo Lig is Yakutian, cutting off the Inuit from cities such as Isit. Or is it? The Yakutians actually don't have that much naval presence in the area, so that was a wise choice. The Blackfoot seem to be doing some damage in Itatsipko although they'll need to pilot a rifleman through the halls of Canadian range units to take it. Carthage and the Ayubids make peace, both conceding they'd rather fall to the Burrs. Scarily enough, the Ayubids actually almost recaptured Bilbai, using crossbowmen. Lodz takes damage, but the Spartans take a small mountain pass into Warsaw. The battle for the Polish capital seems not to be over. What? How aren't you dead yet? I wrote a song and everything that I didn't sing. Napoleon was so cocky, he even brought a worker in to get a head start on building improvements. How dare you try to prevent your own death, Lizzie? Did you make a trade agreement with the devil? The Burrs denounce Australia, probably due to choice of headgear. I'm siding with Australia on this one, don't get me wrong, I like this swanky commando slouch hat, but the upturned digger slouch is much cooler. Vietnam seems to be defending pretty well from Australia, while dealing some damage to Tibet. They're doing great and I'm totally not biased. The USSR has come back for revenge. If it weren't for the conglomeration of severe artillery, I'd say they'd have a damn good chance at recapture. They're, they're basically dead now, I mean come on, knights aren't exactly known for their talent at recapturing cities. Cork is retaken, but the Isles is spread to the south. It won't be long until we have to stop calling them the Irish Isles, and instead refer to them as the Icy Isles. I really hope Ireland recaptures now. Boatcon 210 takes place on the border between Harrismith and Axon. Note the lack of Vietnamese attendance. The Champa reach the industrial era, and immediately start getting Gatling guns. See Vietnam, that is how you upgrade. And lo, Byzantium falls. Still, there are a few triremes. They have a chance. Well, not really, but we can dream. Rip in pepperoni, Alexios. 2015-2015. Buenos Aires looks close to falling. It would help if Chile had any nearby land melee units. America has basically negated Canada's army. Impressive. Itatipko is under Blackfoot control, and far from being a simple observer, Australia is blocking a strategic tile. Come on, dude. If you want to observe, build a bloody submarine. Finally! That took too long. Oh yeah, rest in peace and stuff. F. I kind of feel bad now. And Buenos Aires falls to Chile. It doesn't seem like it'll be easy to take back as well. The Brazilians look as if they're coming from the north. It seems Argentina may very well suffer the same fate as a certain other gold and light blue sieve. No rankings this time, but we have a religion overview. Catholicism is in the lead, followed closely by Judaism. 
All the other religions are roughly the same, except Islam, which needs no introduction. And the Grand Map, a portal into an alternate reality where the Sioux dominate America, Hawaii dominates Southeast Asia, and the Philippines live on in Europe, brings this part to a close. I've been Senshi, and I'd just like to say sorry for the delay, and sorry for the narration, and I'm Burger, and I'd also like to say sorry for the delay, and um, you're welcome for not singing. As a parting gift, I'd like to give you some backstory to Pangolin, available to emergency narrate, Senshi, yeah, I'm free, Tipangolin, awesome.